Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about the Harlem Renaissance. Between 1919 and the late 1930s, an African-American cultural flowering took place in Harlem in New York City. This movement came to be known as the Harlem Renaissance. The origins of the Harlem Renaissance can be traced, at least in part, to the Great Migration. In the first decades of the 20th century, there was a major movement of African Americans out of the rural South to the urban centers in the North. The migration was driven in part by the desire for economic opportunity and to escape the oppressive racial and social laws in the South. During the First World War, many African American exiles, expatriates, and soldiers spent time in metropolitan centers like London and Paris, and when they returned home, brought with them new experiences and a sense of internationalism. As importantly, while in Europe, African Americans met and mingled with other people of African descent. The combination of exposure abroad and a newly urbanized population at home gave rise to a new, vibrant sense of African cultural essence. The epicenter of this movement was Harlem, located at the northern end of Manhattan. The Harlem Renaissance found its earliest expression in literature. Periodicals and journals, such as W.E.B. Du Bois' The Crisis, published works from aspiring African-American writers, and soon New York publishing houses began printing works by African-Americans. Among the most celebrated Harlem Renaissance authors were the poet Langston Hughes, critic and author James Weldon Johnson, and novelist Zora Neale Hurston. The cultural identity put forth in literature soon blossomed in other art forms. Visual artists like sculptor Augusta Savage and painter William H. Johnson created works celebrating contemporary African American life. But it was perhaps music that had the greatest cultural impact. Many of the early 20th century migrants to northern cities brought with them a musical tradition based in African spirituals and the blues. Those elements mixed and fused with then popular ragtime music to create jazz. Popularized by musicians such as Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, and Billie Holiday, jazz broke down social barriers as white audiences flocked to hear these artists perform. In many of the jazz clubs that sprang up in Harlem and other cities, white and black audiences mingled freely, enjoying the music and performances. Soon, jazz spread to Europe and around the world, and became one of America's greatest cultural exports. Yet the legacy of the Harlem Renaissance went far beyond culture and art. It created a medium of expression for the African American experience and acted as a culturally unifying event. In many ways, the Harlem Renaissance laid the foundation for the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.